Good evening and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo DG Makindi. We kick off by telling you that President Muhammad Buhari has expressed the conviction that Nigeria is on the way to becoming Africa's fertilizer powerhouse, granting audience to the executive committee members of the Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers Association of Nigeria. The president said already the country is a global player in the urea space. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports. For every nation to have peace and prosperity, its economy must be inclusive. For Nigeria, a predominantly agrarian nation, President Buhari said having an inclusive economy meant prioritizing the enhancement of the nation's agricultural value chain. And with fertilizer being an indispensable input towards achieving food security, various interventions, including the presidential fertilizer initiatives, have been developed to support the fertilizer industry so as to make the commodity available and accessible to farmers. A key indicator of how successful our policies are is the fact that we had no shortage of fertilizers during the COVID lockdowns. Today, I am pleased to hear that we will not have any shortages in Nigeria because of the Eastern European conflicts that have impacted the global fertilizer trade. All these trends indicate backward integration policy or the right policy. In the last five years, over 114 billion naira has been injected into the fertilizer industry, thereby significantly increasing the number of blending plants from seven operating at 10% of their installed capacity to 70. And with our mega urea production facilities, Nigeria is definitely a player in the urea space. I would therefore like to thank members of the Fight Lider Producers Association once again for this very patriotic backward integration project. Through these investments, you are double blessed as you are making profits and bring prosperity to millions of Nigerians working in the agricultural value chain. For the Association of Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers, FEPSAN, its success in climbing to the next level is not only evident by the number of factories commissioned, but also by the many pyramids of rice, maize, and other crops dotting the landscape. Today, Many nations who rely on fertilizer import are facing acute fertilizer shortage. Nigeria remains one of the few countries in Africa and indeed the world where fertilizer availability is not an issue. Mr. President, for the 2022 wet season, I would like to declare to you and all Nigerians that Pepsan is ready, willing and able to ensure fertilizer are available in all the parts of the country. Nigeria should not panic. Your Excellency, the CBI currently has a balance of stock of fertilizer from the last planting season under the bank's anchor borrowers program to the tune of 1.95 million bags of fertilizer and have committed additional 2.6 million bags for use during our 2022 program. For that reason, we are optimistic that um, fertilizer will be available to our own smallholder farmers are considerably reduced prices. Under the Anko Borrowers Program, Mr. Emefele said the Central Bank of Nigeria has so far disbursed over 941 billion naira to 4.2 million smallholder farmers 
cultivating 21 agricultural commodities on 5.4 million hectares of land across Nigeria. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The Nigerian Senate has extended the implementation of the capital component of the 2021 budget. The bill presented by leader of the Senate, Yehia Abdullahi, is to extend the implementation from 31st March to 31st of May 2022. This is to ensure that all existing projects are fully funded and contractors paid and to achieve 100% implementation of the 2021 Appropriations Act. That in 2021 there was a environment of the aggregate sum of 276 million, which was approved for the several MBAs by the National Assembly in December 2021, along with 100 percent relief of the 2021 capital budget of the MBAs. So there is compelling need to really extend the implementation of our 2021 budget so that uh, our people will benefit in order to extend the implementation year of the capital component of the Appropriation Act 2021 from 31st March 2022 to 31st May 2022. And time is of essence, and I will urge the executive arm of government to swiftly uh, swing into action to ensure that we achieved 100% budget implementation like we did achieve in the 2020 Appropriation Act. The governors of Rivers, Enugu, Abia, and that of Oyo states, as well as some National Assembly members under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, have paid homage on former military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, alongside the former head of state, General Abdusalami Abubakar, to champion a way forward on the state of the nation. Governor of Abia state, Okeze Ipazu, who spoke on behalf of the entourage, said the deliberation dwelt on security and economic emancipation of the country. Fatima Aliu reports. On the entourage were governors of River State, Inyesum Wiki, that of Oyo, Oluwashi Imakinde, Ifrain Uguayi of Enugu, Okeze Ikpiazo of Abia State, as well as some members of National Assembly and other people of vested interest. The meeting held at the former military president's residence in Mina was to chart a new course on the nation's insecurity and socio-economic emancipation of the country. First, to um, consult with um, um, the former head of state and discuss national issues, economic development, security, unity of our country, and also to commend him for his uh, support for the unity of this country and um, the discussions went very well and uh, we will advance it from there. He expressed concern and said that um, he expects the younger generation to take up the gauntlet and um, rescue Nigeria. The visiting team described the deliberation as fruitful. In Mina, Fatima Liu, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says his attention has been drawn to media reports on the alleged defection of some supporters and All Progressives Congress, APC, in Kwara State to the Social Democratic Party, SDP. In a statement, the minister says despite the fact that the supporters are genuinely aggrieved at the way and manner they have been treated by the Kwara State's governor, and his supporters against the backdrop of their immeasurable contributions to the massive victory of the party in the state in 2019, leaving the party is not the solution, having taken the grievances of the supporters to the highest level of the party and with the belief that everything will be done to address the issues and unite the party ahead of the 2023 elections. The minister therefore appealed to those who have left to reconsider their stand and return to their natural habitats. Lai Mohammed used the opportunity to once again call on the leadership of the party to urgently address the issues that have forced some members of the party in Kwara State to contemplate leaving the party. Lagos is our first stop on Nationwide and Hingino is our guide. Good evening, Hingino. Good evening, Ayo Deji.
Welcome to Lagos. The British High Commission in Nigeria is deepening and widening the financial sector through increase in investment, which will indirectly create domestic wealth and enhance job opportunities. Michael Olale reports that the financial sector deepening FSD Africa is driving the process in which response plans are geared to address specific demands. One of the core mandates of the UK-funded Specialist Development Agency, FSD Africa, is to strengthen the capital markets to provide alternative means of funding businesses with the view of eliminating poverty across crucial sectors of the economy. The British Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria believes the initiative will propel economic growth and stimulate investment in Nigeria, considering the determination and energy of the people to drive transformation. So it's said all of that in the context of our efforts trying to encourage economic growth and investment and trade in Nigeria. And really, we see a strong Nigerian economy as critical not just for Nigerians, but frankly for our relationship with Nigeria, the trade and investment, the trade and investment in Nigeria. The goal here is not just to provide capital for businesses, but building inclusion, creates competition while increasing prosperity. There are many interesting and exciting routes to bring finance into the agricultural sector, not necessarily through the banks. So there are companies which have mechanisms for hiring out tractors, whereby people who have got money can invest on crowdfunding platforms for tractors. There is an aspect of investment opportunity that we cater for insurance and in fulfillment of this mandate, the group has been meeting with marketers to know areas of waste that could be profitably managed. Developing local capital markets, for example, in local currency is a very big part of that uh, strategy because it, it improves the long-term financing of those initiatives in appropriate instruments uh, in the market. In the interim, Efforts are currently channeled towards building conversations around sustainable financing and insurance. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Failure to adhere to stipulated speed limits by motorists has been identified as one of the many reasons for avoidable road crashes. The Lagos State Deputy Corps Commander, Federal Road Safety Commission, Cyril Zongo, said this while giving an update on the Saturday night accident at Ojuelegba, Lagos. Yabo Waleri has details. The Ojuelegba Bridge no doubt provides relief to motorists plying both Western Avenue and Ekorodu Road axis of the state as it links the island and other parts from the mainland. The accident which occurred Saturday evening involved an unlashed truck falling off the bridge on a car stopped by traffic lights. Matthew Cyril Zango is the Deputy Corps Commander of FRSC Lagos State Command. He speaks on the measures the Corps has put in place to curb future occurrence. What we've been doing over time is, you know, public enlightenment. We've taken, you know, the, the, the crusade to them, down to their parks. We've been talking to them. Most of the vehicles that do this are always the trucks. And this time around, it was not even loaded. It was not carrying anything. So that speed must have motivated it. And we, because of the influence of alcohol, again, he has taken, has to bring him down. So we'll keep talking to them and we'll keep enforcing uh, the rules and regulations. We do arrest them, as many as we can, but we can't get them all. Some motorists speak on possible ways of reducing such incidents in future. Let them stop running on the, uh, this uh, bridge. Anybody that is driving should not drink. It has been happening several years, especially on that part. This side on the other side. I think the government gets away. If there's a way, they can walk on the bridge. Some road users are also of the opinion that motorists should exercise caution always. In Lagos, Iyabo Wale Eri, NTA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Doris is set in Potaka to bring us stories from there after this break. Good evening and welcome to Port Harcourt. 
As activities leading to the 2023 general elections gather stem, political gladiators have begun to make consultations. How knowledgeable is the populace on their rights to make leadership choice? What should be the yastic in choosing the next set of leaders? Kingsley Amajiri in this report brings us answers to the poses. Going by INEC timeline, political parties are expected to conduct their primaries and submit names of candidates from April 4, 2022 to 3 June 2022. Already, some candidates have indicated interest to vie for various elective positions. This time of Nigeria, we need all of us to sit down and have a small repression and think about how we can make Nigeria a better nation. The issue of power shift has equally reverberated in the polity. What should be the defining factors drawing from past experience? What we need now in our leadership position are people that have character, that have ability, that have capacity to rule Nigeria. So we should look at those persons that actually have the hearts, that actually have the tenacity to face the problem of Nigeria. What factor is insecurity? Who can bail us from this insecurity? That is what we should all look at. What are the prospects for younger Nigerians and what role should they be playing before, during and post-2023 polls? The electorate should get their PVCs and also ensure that the electoral law is implemented that at least to a large percentage we are looking for hoping that our votes will count this time observers want institutions like national orientation agency noe and the civil rights groups to begin to educate the populace on their rights as voters and the implication of active participation in the electoral process in port harcourt kingsley amachiri nta news the war against drug abuse, cultism, togri and all the social vices affecting the youths must start from the home if it must yield needed results. Various speakers at the one-day seminar organized for the boy child in partnership with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency against drug abuse. Kelvin Samuel reports. Research shows that 80% of crimes in contemporary societies are perpetrated by male youths. The remaining 20% involves the female folks, with another research showing that female students have continued to outshine their male counterparts in most examinations. This seminar, therefore, where some boys are gathered and trained on how to become better versions of themselves is armed, as according to participants, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. There's no security at all in courtism, and there's no beneficiary at all in drug abuse. So I've learned that um, by being innovative and thinking big and starting small, we're going to paint a better future of ourselves tomorrow. The drugs abuse. It is a very bad substance which, when taken into the body, it affects the body negatively. Stakeholders agree that this is the way to go, saying that it has become counterproductive not to include the boy child in such trainings aimed at making the society better. And this time, you have to try to be and what you choose for yourself is what will speak for you. So you don't take drugs, you have to the event which has as its theme the war against drug abuse among the youth a mere perspective is a deliberate effort in ensuring a brighter future for the boy child and in turn the entire society in uyo kevin samuel nta news that's a beat from Port Harcourt Nationwide continues with Deji in Abuja. Thanks, Doris, in our Port Harcourt Network Center. Let's continue nationwide and let you know that the Nigerian Railway Corporation has released an update on the ill-fated AK-9 train of Monday, 28th March, 2022. A statement by the Managing Director of FIDET, Ohiria, says... One coach was rerailed and safely moved to Rigasa Station, bringing the total number of recovered coaches to eight. 
intensive truck repair works are ongoing at the site to enable the recovery of the remaining coaches and locomotives. On the status of the 362 validated passengers on board, 196 persons on the manifest are now confirmed safe and at their various homes. 46 phone numbers on the manifest are still either switched off or not reachable since the train attack last week. 33 phone numbers on the manifest are ringing but no response from the other end. 62 phone numbers on the manifest when called rang non-existent. 22 persons are reportedly missing by their relatives. 8 persons are confirmed dead. There were a total of 20 train crew members on board. NRC remains committed to the safety of the passengers and staff on board of the ill-fated AK-9 train service. Based on economic realities on ground, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAMB, says the board has allowed privately owned computer-based test centers to charge 1,000 Naira as against the 700 Naira from candidates willing to participate in the 2022 UTME mock exercise. JAMB Registrar Professor Ishaq Oloyede, who stated this while fielding questions from journalists in Abuja, said no charge is attached for candidates taking the mock examination in JAMB's owned CBT centers as it is free. Unless we don't want them to conduct the examination, we have done the analysis of their expenses and if we insist that they must put on their ACs and their, and it means the cost of generator of a diesel to be taken into consideration. We are not increasing our charges despite the fact that the cost is going up. So we felt that we should not, if they are our partners and they want to, why we do the sacrifice? We cannot impose unrealistic sacrifice on our partners. The mock examination affords UTME candidates the opportunity to familiarize themselves with the examination procedures. There is a strong call among stakeholders for youth to shun cultism and drug addiction. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. The prevalence and growing nature of cultism in various Nigerian institutions and drug addiction among young people is the reason for this symposium. What started as confraternities in Nigerian universities have... It is a room full of idealists who believe that drug addiction and cultism are interwoven in the terms of criminal activities and may frustrate the quest for national development. Every crime today we drive is source from drug abuse, drug misuse, or and cultism. So this will lead to poor economic growth and overall well-being of the citizenry. The society is threatened if these challenges are not addressed. Destructive consequences of these acts were outlined and long-time goal is to see how Nigeria will be rid of this social menace. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Ita Enang, has again suggested that the federal government should formalize artisanal refining and set up a body to look into the technology being used by those engaged in the practice. Discussing the formalizing of the informal petroleum sector on Good Morning Nigeria, he says this could be a pathway to achieving economic stability in the petroleum sector. Ekemin Williams has the details. Artisanal refining has attracted substantial attention in recent times because of the many collateral effects arising from the practice. This has led to crackdown on practitioners by multiple agencies of government. Some commentators have canvassed a different approach. 
SSA to the President on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Itainang, is one of those who believe that given the toll it is taking on Nigeria's petroleum sector, it is time to integrate artisanal refiners by accommodating them in the modular refining process. Without engaging with these people, you will still be damaging the environment. You can't have enough money from this to pay to go into the federation account, which you can distribute to the 36 state governments. You won't have enough money. You are going to suspend many projects which, are, which we are using the money from oil to pay at the federal government level. Economies of scale, if they were buying the crude and producing, it would not be economic because they won't be able to sell to the, the construction companies you claim they, they are selling to. So you must understand that value chain for what it is. Mm -hmm. It is one in which you are taking something that belongs to someone else, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. and then selling it, and you want yeah, to formalize... Uh, it's, not still, it's not taken by them. They are simply supplied. He suggests that the setting up of a body, including the National Agency of Science and Engineering Infrastructure, to look into the technology of artisanal refineries with a view to developing better equipment. He also suggested that state governments should create refinery parks. The formal um, modular refineries, the one that they're talking about, I think I understand they produce diesel only. Now, but the other ones in the creek, which you call informal, is producing these three products. And they said at the conference that any day that the artisanal refiners stop producing, there will be scarcity in this country. If you have been doing it, you are look at their skin. You will see rashes, skin infections. Petroleum economist Dr. Timothy Okun had a contrary view, insisting that the fact that the artisanal refiners get crude at a cheap cost because it is sourced illegally is leading to huge value losses. So it's a refining is a sophisticated operation. Let us not reduce it to, to kai kai and, and, and things like that because there, there are certain specifications and standards. In Abuja, Kemeni Williams, and a six man kidnapped syndicate, including a nursing mother who specializes in kidnapping toddlers have been paraded by operatives of the Department of State Service in Ondo State. The state's director of the service, Jonathan Kure, during the parade assured that DSS and other security agencies will not relent in reducing criminality in Ondo State. Abiola Ario reports. The DSS boss said the gang had been kidnapping toddlers between the ages of two and four years. Through the support of the state government, a manhunt was launched to track down the young man and the nursing mother. And what is even more touching is that one of their members is a nursing mother and wife of one of the kidnappers. She also plays the dual role of being the camera of this group. The state acting governor, Lucky Ayedatewa, during the parade assured residents of the state of adequate security of lives and property. And what was going to use this opportunity to uh, pass this message to the landlords? Because all of these criminals, they reside in one house or the other. They need to do proper profile of their tenants and know what they do for a living because by that, during the investigation during the arrest some of these people were trailed or to their various places of abroad and landlords will be made to answer questions the DSS boss assured that the suspects will be arraigned in court in no distant time in Akure Abiola Rio NTA News in another development, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yehaya, has lauded efforts of troops of Operation Hardin K for recovering cash of weapons, vehicles and other equipment from Boko Haram terrorists during ongoing counter-insurgency operations in the Northeast Theater of Operations. Mayamuna Garba reports that General Farouk commanded the troops while inspecting the recovered weapons at the Maimalari cantonments in Maiduguri, Roberto State's capital. We'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. 
Time now to go over to our Sokoto Network Center where Asmao will be giving us the next set of reports on Nationwide. Good evening, Asmao. Ayo Deji, and welcome to Nationwide from Sokoto Network Center. The House of Representatives Committee on Public Account has called on tertiary institutions and other federal government agencies to ensure prudent management of funds provided for project allocation to them. Member representing Wurunu Raba Federal Constituency and Coordinator Sokotozam for a Project's Performance Audit Oversight, Ibrahim Al Mustafa Aliu, made the call while on oversight and defense of projects by the concerned authorities. Sheikh Muhammad Dati reports. The House of Representatives Committee on Public Account is one of the committees of the House of Representatives. The committee, under the leadership of the member representing Wurunu Raba Federal Constituency, we are in Sokoto on oversight function of tertiary institutions and agencies of both federal and state governments that are beneficiaries of federal government's projects. Each of the affected institutions and agencies are to present the capital projects allocated to them and how the projects were carried out. The committee is meeting tertiary institutions from Sokoto and Zampara states who are to submit their performance report before the committee. Ibrahim al Mustafa Aliyu noted that the meeting is not meant to which hunt anyone, but rather an avenue for the concerned bodies to submit their action plans and performance, explain to the committee, and offer suggestions. In that respect, telling that this is what you can get, but quickly tell them, okay, now you are going to procure one boat tight and so the amount that we have approved. So take this into note. You are the way to meet it. This issue will come up and it will be an indictment on your own site. Contractors handling various projects at the designated tertiary institutions and agencies are expected to brief the committee on their performance. Osman Amfoyo University Teaching Hospital, Social Investment Unit, and other concerned agencies from Sokoto and Zampara states appeared before the committee. In Sokoto, Sheo Muhammad Dati, NTA News. Pensioners from Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, has, have embarked on a peaceful protest nationwide over non-payment of 2019 minimum wage. In Sokoto state, Sheo Muhammad Dati reports that the pensioners barricaded barricaded the entrance of Sultan Abakar International Airport, the report. The Sokoto Unit of Nigeria Union of French and Superior Airport Authority of Nigeria Fund Branch joined other members of the Union nationwide to stage a peaceful protest at the Sultan Abakar III International Airport, Sokoto. The pensioners barricaded the entrance to the airport over non payment of 2019 minimum wage and consequential adjustment, which was agreed upon by the management of FAN and the pensioners in 2021. Due to the failure of FAN management to implement the consequential minimum wage agreement, the pensioners resolved to carry out peaceful protests demanding for the implementation and areas of the consequential minimum wage in all the airports nationwide. When they say a man with a family, you know, the whole house depends on you. And because of that, we cannot decide now what to do. But by the time, you no, know, we are making a peaceful demonstration now. But we don't know what the next one will be. Whether it's to destroy, we don't know. But it's better for them to do something that will make us not to destroy. The action by the pensioners resulted to a little hitch for intending travelers as they were denied entrance into the airport for some time. The outcome of an emergency meeting convened this morning between the pensioners and management of FAN will determine the sustainers of the protest. In Sokoto, Sheo Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And a reminder that you can follow this new broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube channel NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter at NTA News Now, our Facebook page NTA Network News and Instagram NTA Network for updates. We'll now take a short break and when we return, Nationwide will continue in our Just Network Center. <laughs> Staying with us on Nationwide and welcome to Joss. 
Key players in the solid mineral sector say they are committed to energizing the sector to augment petroleum despite the challenges inherent therein. This was at a capacity building training by the Nigeria Export Promotion Council in JOS. Caleb Gochin reports. The federal government, in its quest to diversify the economy, has in recent times encouraged the development of other sectors with the solid minerals as one of the leading areas. Addressing participants, North Central Regional Coordinator Samson Ido says great potentials abound in the solid mineral sector, which if properly harnessed, will surpass oil. He notes that the sector has suffered neglect, but is hopeful that respite will come. Mining sector will be able to uh, contribute meaningfully to the GDP as well as enhance uh, the forest uh, honey. Participants further underscore the place of solid minerals in the development of the country with a call on relevant authorities to provide the enabling environment for its revival. The spirit of this workshop is already signified by the greater hope an eminent success of economic diversification in the condemned governments who are policy makers and implementers in many ways to be able to now make us to move beyond where we are. Plato State Government says it is ever ready to assist even as it has put in place all that is required for ease of business by all. The meeting is expected to draw input from key players towards a more productive sector. In Jaws, Caleb Gochin, NT News. The Joss University Teaching Hospital is training personnel on ways of managing musculoskeletal pains in line with best global practices. Bilki Sunuhu has details. About 1.71 billion people around the world are estimated to suffer from musculoskeletal pain in the bones, joints, ligaments, muscles, and tendons. Musculoskeletal pain can be acute or chronic with symptoms such as aching and stiffness, fatigue, muscle twitches, sleep disturbances, and burning sensation in the muscles. Gathered here are participants from different fields to acquire more knowledge in managing such pains. And a lot new skills so it's just for me to go and start practicing in order to reduce this musculoskeletal pain as being explained i feel is the, the knowledge acquired is very important in, to the fact that you, you'll be able to treat yourself of pain as well as help others that are passing through pain the workshop is to keep all stakeholders abreast with global best practices. We will incorporate both the old and the new and see how we'll give our patients very quality patient care. There's no better way we can serve our community than to identify a problem and try to solve a problem. There were goodwill messages from various stakeholders with a call on participants to utilize the knowledge acquired. In JOS, Bilki Sunuhu. NTA News. And that's it from Joss. It's back to Ayo Deji in Abuja for more reports on Nationwide. Zen right in our Joss Network Center, we appreciate you. Let's move on and tell you that efforts are underway to digitize recruitment processes in public institutions devoid of external interference to ensure all public appointments are based on merit. This is in fulfillment of the presidential agenda to lift 100 million people out of poverty. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Iregbe Shola, disclosed this at a national anti-corruption policy dialogue on entrenching transparency in public service recruitment in the country, put together by ICPC and Office of the Head of Service of the Federation. Recruitment process into public service is a matter of interest to all as it is key to driving any nation's economic growth. Amidst employment scam in the country, especially in the public sector, stakeholders converged to brainstorm on how to make the processes of public recruitment more transparent and merit-based. The minister says, with the administration's target at ensuring the safety of lives and property, there's the need to uphold best practices in recruitment processes, especially of security personnel. There can't be any justification for recruiting anybody less than the best 
into any of the hands of the public service. An increasing number of job seekers are in constant contact with public officials or possibly other entities. Hence, this trend underscores the importance of putting in place systems to reduce the possible to the barest any form of human contact. From 5% of a for physically challenged persons to pending petitions on recruitment scam, speakers prefer solutions on how to make recruitment processes better in the country. It is the belief of the National Assembly that all appointments to public office should be on merit, and that is why the Senate stressed suitable qualification be there when we screen appointees. ICPC has received and is investigating over 100 petitions on recruitment scam from victim institutions and complicit individuals. The National Policy Dialogue, which is the fourth in its series, is expected to come up with a mechanism that will ensure transparency in recruitment processes. Following the inability of the National Assembly to give assent to women affirmation bills for participation in politics in recent weeks, the Minister of Women Affairs has expressed the firm belief that Nigerian women will enjoy more support in the political field in the nearest future. She stated this when she received a team from the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, in Abuja. The UNDP team is exploring key areas of needs for women, such as gender equality, fair contests, determining necessary piece of legislation in order to form recommendations of the United Nations leadership. The minister describes the visit as timely and further advocates protection of women's rights. I will one step. I will make it an impact. When you see what women are doing in their that alone it's enough for you to go no way to so that thing I think of because uh, the percentage of women participation it's true. Pauline Tallinn also highlighted the need for girl child education support from the United Nations Development Program. The UNDP team led by Serge Kobwimana, senior political and electoral officer, came from New York by the special request of the Minister of Women Affairs at the United Nations to enable them devise ways of assisting Nigerian women. 34 indigents of Akwa Ibom State, including children displaced by activities of bandits in Katsina State, have arrived in Uyo, the Akwa Ibom State's capital. Emed Young Omar reports that the returnees were received by the Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Dr. Ini. At the, the increasing cases of insecurity in parts of the country have continued to unleash its fury on all sectors of the country's economy. A particular case in point is the crisis which started in June 2021 in some local government areas of Casina State. Among those affected were Kwaibom State indigents residing and doing businesses in the areas. We have been funded mostly by very self. The displaced persons, however, expressed gratitude to the state government for their show of love and quick intervention. I thank God for the governor to make the people for us to come back to the welcome accorded us. She has finished right and uh, given a lot of material to them. The Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Dr. Inia Diakman, assures the victims of Casina crisis of government's intervention to ameliorate their plight. Everything put in place for you is torn, is being facilitated by his excellence. The returnees are taken care of as they are provided with basic amenities to ease their fatigue. In Uyo, Emed Yongmo, NTA News. Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, in conjunction with private donors and Zumuta Association USA, is providing humanitarian support to the less privileged in the country. Correspondent Obiageli Uguoke reports that the event was honored by Governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullahi Suli. 
It's a palliative presentation project. 18 non-governmental organizations are carefully selected as recipients of the palliative with the aim of supporting the effort to alleviate the hardship being experienced by some Nigerians. Each of the 18 NGOs was presented with a cheque of 500,000, amounting to 9 million naira. These palliatives will in turn be disbursed to the less privileged across the country. This is the only way our society can aid the state, the federal government, to uplift the livelihood of the poor in our region and Nigeria as a whole. The founding fathers and past president of the organization grace the occasion amongst whom is Governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullah Hisule, who chaired the organization from 1997 to 1999. Nigerians in diaspora are actually, you know, are, are sending more funds into Nigeria than maybe any other country that you can think of. So it's an excellent initiative and it's now organized. I wish to salute the humanism and your show of production as Nigerians, because you have not forgotten who. The Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission promised continuous partnership with the Commission's focal point officers at state level. So we're here to work together, to build together, and to promote you. The Muta Association USA is made up of individuals from the 19 northern states, including the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, with 12 chapters in the United States of America. Obiagiliu Gwoke. NTA News. And sports is next with Olumide Egutola. Volleyball coaches and players say the Super Cup competition organized by the Nigeria Volleyball Federation, NVBA, has increased competitiveness while adding value to the game both at local and national levels. We also commended the Federation for the competition. If a player from Division 1 is coming and playing hard like this, it means the, the league will be interesting. I'm happy that I'm playing them for the first time as Quara United versus Karupila and I'm defeating them for the first time. And that is how it's going to be forever. Yeah, that's game. And to tell you that the game is improving, but that will not stop me from winning the trophy. I will still carry the cup. In football, match day 21 of the Nigeria Professional Football League, we take the centre stage on Wednesday across various stadia of the Federation. In Ibadan, shooting stars will attempt to return to winning waves against Gombe United. Abia Warriors will lay ambush for Inibar Football Club at home. Aqua United will attempt to demonstrate how united they are at the home front of Kano Pillars. Same for MFM, that will play way to Remo Stars among other matches. Now to grassroots football. The final phase of the Dodo Mayana Soccer Fun Under the Team Football Tournament ended Tuesday afternoon at the Mind Builders International School Lagos. The football competition, which is the brainchild of former Super Eagles captain Peter Rufai, seeks to discover and develop talent from the school system. In the final match, host Mind Builders International School defeated the unique international school via Longo to a match champion. We are going to be monitoring these players uh, from time to time to ensure that these players exported out are uh, watched and impacted upon. In the English Premier League, where the fixture indicated that Burnley will host Everton. From the of Hajia Hassana Aliu Saliu Kefi after a protracted illness. Aged 80 years, Haji Asana is survived by eight children, 50 grandchildren and 27 great-grandchildren, among whom are Sani Ibn Saleh, immediate past general manager of NTA Lafia and Awalu Salihu, executive vice chairman Nasarawa Broadcasting Service. She has since been buried according to Islamic injunctions. And that's nationwide. We thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Deji Makinde. Please remember to connect with the NTA and stand against rape and rapists. On behalf of the entire production crew, have a wonderful evening ahead. Bye bye. <laughs>